This unsightly form of fat that we see stubbornly glued to our midsections is known as subcutaneous adipose tissue. But this is only one type of fat. And although this is the type of fat that most guys are desperately trying to get rid of, there is a much more dangerous form of fat which is responsible for putting more men in an early grave than you could ever count. I'm talking about visceral fat or VAT as it's clinically referred to. Now, if you're watching right now, there's a high chance you might be concerned about this, but don't be because I'm here to help. In this video, I'm gonna give you a complete overview of what visceral fat is, why you need to be aware of it, and how you're going to fix it in five simple steps. And if you follow what I'm about to tell you, you'll be able to eliminate it for good so you can live your best, most optimized life and most importantly, live longer and better for yourself and for your loved ones. So let's jump in. For those of you who don't already know, we have many different types of fat that sit inside the body. Firstly, we have the unsightly subcutaneous fat that sits on our belly and haunts our dreams. Then we have other forms of fat like brown adipose tissue, which is actually highly metabolic tissue full of mitochondria and actually enhances metabolism. Then we have the various other forms of fat that are spread throughout the body, some absolutely essential for many different health processes and then others that are catastrophically detrimental for health like the hepatic fats that build up within the liver leading to things like fatty liver disease. We also have the fat deposits that build up inside the muscle tissue known as IML or intramyocellular lipids. These fats engulf the cells and act like chewing gum jammed in the lock blocking insulin from keying in to let glucose out of the blood into the tissue. This keeps the door locked on the muscle, increasing insulin resistance, driving up glucose, and increasing the risk of metabolic issues long term. Now, these detrimental forms of fat, like the IML and the fat deposits in the liver, as well as all of the other tissues, are super relevant because they go hand in hand with visceral fat buildup. Now, I don't want to get too deep into the biology of it all, but there are certain things that you should know. Visceral fat is the fat that builds up beneath the abdominal cavity surrounding and smothering all of the organs. It is the most dangerous form of fat because it drives up inflammatory processes, creates a huge burden of stress on all of the individual systems, and it leaves these fat deposits throughout each system leading to things like metabolic syndrome, fatty liver disease, and insulin resistance. Now, I'm sure you didn't come here for a class on human biology. You came here for some answers on how to fix the problem. So let's jump into the five keys to eliminating your visceral fat forever. Number one, a calorie deficit. Deficit. So visceral fat, just like subcutaneous fat, is highly responsive to a negative energy balance, meaning you are burning more calories than you are taking in through the form of food. So the first thing you're going to want to make sure is that you're losing weight by moving more to expend energy and consuming less calories in the form of food and drink to create that negative energy balance. The best and simplest way to do this is to set yourself realistic and achievable exercise and movement targets each week that you can confidently do consistently. That might look like 10,000 steps per day, three times strength sessions each week, and one times cardio sessions. That covers the expenditure side of the coin. Then with the food, you can gauge your calorie start point using a simple online calculator. My go-to is the Harris Benedict formula because it typically is one of the more accurate ones. Once you have your number of calories to maintain your weight, all you then need to do is eat less than this typically by around about 500 calories. Do this consistently, tracking your food using a food tracking app like Chronometer or MyFitnessPal and see what the progress looks like after one week. Once you've followed your nutrition and your training for just one week, you will then see whether that amount of training, that amount of movement and that amount of calories is providing you with the result that you want. If you've lost weight and you have seen physical progress, then perfect, just rinse and repeat. If not, then you need to either reduce your food or you need to do a little bit more movement. Number two, food quality really matters when it comes to visceral fat. Unlike subcutaneous fat, which is almost solely determined by the calories in versus calories out formula, visceral fat is slightly different in the sense that the quality of your food really matters and certain pro-inflammatory diets will increase your visceral fat levels and particularly the diets high in saturated fats will also drive
drive up your visceral fat levels too. When I talk about pro-inflammatory foods and pro-inflammatory diets, I'm talking about foods, you know, high in hydrogenated oils, foods high in trans fats, foods high in refined sugars, in high fructose corn syrup. All of these foods can increase your visceral fat levels even in the absence of a calorie surplus. This is why you can still get very visually skinny people who will still test very, very high on a DEXA scan because although you can't see it, they have a lot of internal fat that's surrounding their organs. Take my client Darren, for example. In this picture, even though you can see the outline of his abs, his DEXA scan showed him having over 28% body fat levels with over two stones of that fat being deposited around his trunk. Now, I don't know about you, but I can't see two stones of fat here on Darren. And that's because most of it was in the form of visceral fat engulfing his organs. And when we look at Darren's lifestyle leading up to this point, it's really of no surprise because Darren, although very physically active with his job, which will have offset many of the negative side effects, he was drinking every night, eating baked goods, refined sugars, and all of the stuff that leads to visceral fat buildup. And when we reviewed his blood work, it reinforced everything we would already expect to see with this type of lifestyle. Liver enzymes and lipid panel correlating to fatty liver disease, insulin resistance and early warning signs of atherosclerosis, inflammatory markers like CRP and white blood cells showing systemic inflammation, cortisol through the roof from the sheer stress on his body and testosterone on the floor due to the accumulation of stress from all of these things. A calorie deficit on its own wouldn't have fixed these issues if he hadn't addressed what was underneath. But through reducing refined sugars, cutting back on alcohol and ensuring he was consuming the right amount of healthy fats from monounsaturated and polyunsaturated sources, as well as saturated fats too, he was able to achieve this in just six months and his visceral fat was completely eliminated into healthy ranges. With no more signs of fatty liver, metabolic issues or cardiovascular risk and his testosterone is now in the optimal range too. Number three, sleep, stress and inflammation. I put the together because they all go hand in hand. Now, stress kills more men than I care to mention and also has direct effects on visceral fat accumulation. Now, stress isn't just about, you know, work demands or, you know, kind of emotional baggage. Stress is about anything that disrupts the homeostasis of the body and means that the body has to respond in order to try and bring things back into balance. Now, what we do know is that underlying systemic inflammation is one of the leading causes of visceral fat buildup. And what we also know is that a lack of quality sleep, especially chronically, is one of the leading causes of systemic inflammation. And there are countless studies like this one that show that a lack of quality sleep directly leads to an increase in not just abdominal fat, but also visceral fat accumulation too. And the most interesting thing about this is we see these increases in abdominal fat and visceral fat independent of changes in body weight. So reducing inflammation and controlling your overall stress levels is going to be one of the most impactful things you can do to reduce visceral fat. But this isn't about standing barefoot in the woods singing Kumbaya. This is about sleeping for seven to nine hours each night. It's about reducing your in pro-inflammatory foods. It's about including anti-inflammatory compounds like curcumin or omega-3s or anything else that helps to shut down the over-inflammatory response that the body has. It's also about doing things that increase your stress tolerance. This is usually done via the vagus nerve. So anything like breath work, anything like meditation, anything like getting involved in hobbies, social interaction, all of these things can help to improve your stress tolerance. Cold therapy is another one that will also help to reduce inflammation when done properly. All of these things help to improve your body's natural ability to tolerate different stresses across life. Control your stress, reduce your systemic inflammation, and eliminate your visceral fat. Number four is exercise. Now, the truth is any form of exercise is great for reducing whole body fat, including visceral fat. So you've got exercises like this, which is like low aerobic exercise, walking, cycling, anything within that kind of 60 to 70% max heart rate, this is great. Strength training is also very good for creating better foundations metabolically and just building a better environment inside for controlling visceral fat levels. But the data typically points towards high intensity interval training 
being the most optimal form of exercise for reducing visceral fat levels. And this is because visceral fat is particularly sensitive to catecholamine release. These are things like cortisol and adrenaline, which help to mobilize and oxidize fat, mobilize it from the stored form into the mitochondria to be used as energy. Now, you don't have to absolutely kill yourself doing this. However, the harder you push, the higher the release of catecholamines you're gonna get. The goal really is to get your heart rate over 75% at least for periods of anything from 30 seconds to around about four minutes with rest periods in between. One of the best interval structures you can do, which is one of the best ways you can increase your VO2 max, as well as optimize visceral fat reduction, is to do four minutes. These are kind of endurance sprints. You do four minute sprints with four minutes at a much lighter kind of recovery pace. And then you repeat this for about three to five times. So pick your favorite form of cardio. Ideally, if you're not well trained, a low impact form like bike, like ski erg, like rower, so you can save your joints. And you're gonna go as hard as you possibly can, getting your heart rate at least over that 75%, and then follow that with a rest and repeat that. Anything from 15 minutes to half an hour is really, really good. Number five, daily movement. This is one of the most underappreciated aspects of reducing visceral fat because we can blame all of the processed foods, the high stress, and all of the modern changes in lifestyle for the reason why we have so much more visceral fat than ever and so much more overall fat. But the reality is one of the leading causes is that most guys are just sat on chairs for far too long and not moving in the way that human beings were designed to move. The truth is the longest lived people on this earth are not typically the ones lifting weights and doing sprints five or six times a week, not to downplay the benefit of those things. The longest lived people with the least visceral fat are typically people who move little and often and get involved in things like gardening or just being active as often as, as they possibly can and avoiding sitting down for long periods. And what all of this low intensity movement will do throughout the day is not only expend a lot of energy, it will also work within your fat burning systems, meaning you are constantly clearing fats, triglyceride from the blood, meaning you don't get as much buildup leading to visceral fat. But there's an added and often missed benefit to moving little and often, and that is to keep the fluids of the body moving. One fluid in particular is lymphatic fluid. And what this type of fluid does is it keeps the body free and clear of harmful waste products. So what lymphatic fluid will do is it will reduce inflammation it will get rid of waste products and toxins from the body which essentially creates a better environment where visceral fat levels just won't build up in the same way this is why setting yourself a step target is far more than just the calories you burn from the movement it's about keeping the machine the body well oiled and functioning at all levels free from inflammation free from toxins so that the foundations are there and your body will better control its fat stores so don't just rely on exercise make sure you're getting up from your desk periodically throughout the day to hit those steps and if you're a desk worker and you don't have that opportunity then get yourself a walking pad like this for around 200 pounds so you can make sure you're always hitting those targets then just outside of that just make sure you're being as active as you possibly can throughout life so let's wrap this up with a really quick checklist you can use to get started straight away with eliminating your visceral fat calorie deficit move more eat less track your intake food quality cut back on processed junk alcohol and refined sugars, stick to whole foods, healthy fats, and balanced meals. Sleep and stress, prioritize seven to nine hours of sleep per night. Lower the inflammation and manage stress through recovery, relaxation, and nervous system regulation. Exercise, mix in strength training, aerobic work, and especially some high intensity intervals each and every week. Daily movement, don't just sit all day. Walk more, move often, and keep your body active throughout the day. If you follow these five simple steps consistently, your visit Visceral fat will fall off, your energy will skyrocket and your long-term health will thank you forever for it. Now, if you found this video helpful, make sure you hit subscribe because I'm dropping more science-backed strategies every single week to help men optimize their health, lose fat and live longer, stronger and sharper. And if you're serious about taking this to the next level, then check out the link in the description for more resources and free tools for you to get started.